On March 11th of 2011, there was a 9.0 earthquake just off the northeastern coast of Japan, largest in Japanese recorded history. It generated a 45-foot uh, tall tsunami, much taller in certain places, but the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant was the one that was hardest hit by both the earthquake and the tsunami. Um, three operating reactors at Fukushima Daiichi uh, suffered meltdowns. There's growing evidence that Unit 1 may have begun to melt down just from the earthquake because there were high radiation readings on site before the tsunami hit, about an hour after the earthquake. And there are our workers who are now testifying that they saw pipes come off the walls, uh, pipes break in Unit 1. Unit 1 was the first to melt down, followed by Units 2 and 3. Uh, the meltdowns led to massive hydrogen explosions. Uh, unit 3 was the worst, if folks have seen those images, a very tall mushroom-shaped cloud that rubbleized the reactor building at Unit 3. Uh, unit 1 was the first hydrogen explosion that demolished that building as well. Unit 2, to this day, looks largely intact from the outside, the reactor building. But it actually suffered perhaps the worst damage to its uh, primary radiological containment structure because its hydrogen explosion took place internally, not in the external reactor building. And then, ironically enough, Unit 4, which was not even operating and had been defueled, also exploded. And the lead theory now from the nuclear establishment is that hydrogen gas from Unit 3 flowed through common venting and piping systems over to Unit 4, and it blew it up. So there have been massive radioactivity releases from Fukushima Daiichi, and that's been due to the damage to the containment structures around Units 1, 2, and 3 uh, reactor cores. That's allowed... Uh, radioactive particles and gases and volatile products to escape in the smoke, uh, to blow on the wind vast distances. There's also been the largest ever radioactivity release to the ocean because Chernobyl is uh, located uh, in an internal area to the continent where it's at, although the Dnieper River and the Black Sea eventually did get uh, downstream impacts for sure in a big way. But this was direct radioactivity releases into the Pacific Ocean uh, at a massive level, uh, second only to Chernobyl. And as the releases continue at Fukushima Daiichi, it may catch up yet. The other shoe that we hope will not drop at Fukushima Daiichi is Unit 4. I mentioned that the reactor had been defueled. That means the fuel from the core was put in the pool, the high-level radioactive waste storage pool, 135 tons. The entire building is listing, including the pool, which has steel jacks under the floor of the pool to try to prevent that floor from falling out. If that cooling water is lost because the pool floor falls out, the building collapses due to another big earthquake, then within a matter of hours at most, that fuel will be on, will be on fire. And as much as 100% of the radioactive cesium-137 could then escape into the environment, the pools are not located in any radiological containment structure whatsoever. The reactor buildings had been a, a flimsy containment of sorts for the pools, but they're destroyed now. So these pools are open air. Any discharges would be directly to the environment. There is eight times the, the cesium-137 in the Unit 4 pool at Fukushima Daiichi than escaped from Chernobyl. Eight times the radioactive cesium, which is a muscle seeker in human beings. Uh, it's led to a condition in Chernobyl called Chernobyl heart, especially in children, which is an epidemic disease now. Holes in the hearts of newborn infants caused by radioactive cesium-137. Other heart pathology in children and adults. So that's where cesium goes, human muscle tissue, and causes tremendous damage. And um, that is a disaster waiting to happen at Fukushima Daiichi. That that pool has to be unloaded as quickly as possible. Tokyo Electric has a plan that will take years to unload that pool. And if there's an earthquake that collapses the building at any point, um, the releases would be worse than what's happened already. There were lots of warnings raised over the decades at Fukushima Daiichi. There's a tsunami expert in Japan who for many years, if not decades, had warned about the potential for tsunamis 
in that region. He was the original researcher uh, to document a tsunami that was dated 869 AD, <clears throat> so nearly 1,200 years ago. The tsunami reached two and a half miles inland in Japan and was uh, very tall and hit that very area where Fukushima Daiichi was built. In fact, another nuclear power plant, and again, we were lucky that units four, five, and six at Fukushima Daiichi were not operating or this disaster would have been twice as bad as it has been. But just down the coast, seven miles, is Fukushima Daini, another four reactors, which were operating on March 11, 2011. Their emergency diesel generators were destroyed by the tsunami as well. And the primary electrical grid was largely, almost entirely destroyed, except for one power line. I believe four power lines were lost and one survived the earthquake. And if that one power line had also snapped, then Daini would have gone up in flames as well, just like Daiichi. And this disaster would again have been more than twice as bad. So this tsunami expert long warned about the risks of tsunami and was ignored just as were other critical voices, the anti-nuclear movement. Uh, I visited Fukushima Daiichi seven months before the catastrophe and met the anti-nuclear movement there, the grassroots activists, local elected officials, who had long been warning about earthquake risks, uh, tsunami risks, just accident risks. Tokyo Electric was infamous for its cover-ups of uh, safety violations. The book about the company that's best known is called Empire of Darkness. So in 2002, Tokyo Electric was busted for major uh, safety violations that they had covered up for many years. So those warnings went unheeded. Um, and it's sort of similar to here. I, I met with the, the mayors of the two towns that host Fukushima Daiichi, which is now a dead zone out to a distance of 12.4 miles. And they assured me, as did the uh, Fukushima prefecture nuclear regulators, that everything was covered, everything was safe, it was all going to be fine. We hear the same false assurances here in the United States. And so not to beat up on the Japanese too much, here in the U.S. we have Indian Point, Units 2 and 3, very close to New York City, which are located very close to an earthquake fault line. And in fact, the NRC has grudgingly admitted that probably Indian Point is the worst seismic risk at a nuclear plant in the United States, even though it's in the Northeast, not known for earthquakes. But the plant was so poorly built uh, because they were so oblivious to the fault line that uh, it wouldn't take much of an earthquake to throw that plant into a catastrophe. And in addition to that, there are 20 million people, actually 21 million people within 50 miles of Indian Point. 50 miles was how far the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission and the White House and the State Department warned Americans to get away from Fukushima Daiichi once the disaster began. And we also have uh, other plants in the east and in the west that are uh, vulnerable to earthquakes. We have uh, North Anna in Virginia, which suffered an earthquake last August, August 23rd of 2011. It was a 5.8 on the Richter scale. The epicenter was 11 miles from the nuclear plant in Mineral, Virginia, and damaged the plant, also damaged the radioactive waste storage on site. Incredibly, the NRC very quickly allowed both reactors there to restart, even though only one had been inspected post-earthquake. They just assumed that the other one was in the same shape as the one that had been inspected. Incredible rush to restart. And it was because if they didn't rush to restart, there was growing citizen opposition to the restart. They were worried about what's happened in Japan, which is that 53 of the 54 commercial reactors in Japan are now shut down and in a few days, the 54th and final one will shut down because they need local approval to restart after refueling, after maintenance, after the earthquake, a lot were shut down for safety checks, and the locals will not let them restart after what happened at Fukushima Daiichi. And so we have these vulnerable plants in the east which weren't built strong enough to survive earthquakes. That's the question. In fact, at North Anna, Virginia, they concealed the fact that there were earthquake fault lines immediately on the site. And this should have been a crime. Uh, the companies involved and even federal officials involved in the cover-up should have gone to jail for this. But the charges were dropped. The Justice Department didn't press charges. Out west, we have nuclear plants in California that are vulnerable to earthquakes and tsunamis.